in the next step you're dealing with your circlips so you've got an opening in them you want the opening to face 12 o'clock position which is straight up when it seats inside of your piston you can see I've already installed this one um, there's the arrow I was talking about you see these are standard pistons see the F goes toward the front arrow faces the exhaust so this is going to go on like this um, I've already staged it you want to stage one of your clips before you uh, go in with your wrist pin so that you've only got one to put on when you know <laughs> just making life easier on yourself so I'm going to be coming in from this direction with this uh, wrist pin slide it in keeping in mind that some applications do require thrust washers uh, on either side of this rod when this is going back in apparently this one doesn't I'll make sure I'll read their little insert the insert gives you some measurements and let's say read before starting no thrust washers are required for WSM wrist pin bearings. See that? The factory ones did have them. Some other people's brands do. There, and it tells you right here on this paper the things that I'm repeating to you. See that? We'll get to the rings after I get all of these installed. Now, I give, you see I've got my two-stroke here. I've already poured some down in the bottom of uh, each cylinder hole. They're all pretty much separate as your machine is running. The oil doesn't really pass from one over to the other. That's why you'll end up with one dry one and two that are still good. Uh, the oil is like separated in the crankcase. Um, but uh, we'll go ahead and do the wrist pin and move on. So what I like to do with things like this just think of it as a Lego set for grown-ups. You're building a 3D model here. Um, don't forget your bearings. I like to take them, put them on my finger, put them in the bucket, get some oil on them. That way they've got a liberal amount of oil. And I noticed, I watched some other people, I think it was Mark from Erickson Machine and Performance, he was saying that some of the parts they've been getting in have been kind of crappy lately. So you want to make sure all of your roll pins are in your bearing. And it's not missing any. They're rolling. They're not locked up. Put it in your rod. I like to use lots of two-stroke when I go together. I slather all my excess on the pistons. So when I go on with the uh, cylinder jugs, I've got a good... Easy slide on. Yamaha, much easier than Kawasaki. <laughs> Trust me. Because you don't have the three to do it once. These are individual. So, thumbs up again to Yamaha for their engineering. It is superior. In almost every way. But uh, So, this one's on. I like to double check. With a light. Shining on both sides when I'm done. To make sure that my... Sir clips are fully seated because you can get them on there and they're not fully seated in the groove of the piston. The piston has a groove that they fit in and it holds the wrist pin that that swivels on. So two more to do and that step is done. But two stroke oil is your friend here. Use it, lube everything. It's going to smoke like crazy when you fire it up, but uh, that's part of the fun. Okay, all three pistons are in. See my arrows? All pointing to exhaust. All three are the same part number. That's another thing to make sure of. And then uh, one of the better practices to do is to take a piston without the rings on it and slide it in your jug before... And then you'll know if you got the wrong pistons. It should be a pretty close fit without the rings on it going in. Um, I didn't do that because I'm assuming everything to be fine. And I watched uh, Mark and Erickson do my repair on my cylinder. And he sent me a standard piston as well. 
You see, he took measurements for his boring and all that. But uh, yeah, like I that say, go the- back, double check all your circlips. Opening in the 12 o'clock position, fully seated. There have been many people that have done builds. Their circlips weren't fully seated. They came out and things came apart on them. It's not good. You don't want your engine coming to pieces right after a build. So next, we'll put the rings on. You know, they line up with the openings on these grooves. And I'll show you that in the next step. Okay, so it's ring time. You want to make sure your rings all say the size of piston you're working with. 84 millimeter standard bore. It'll say it right here on the front. For the GP1300R, make sure you got all the right part numbers and that they're all standard. You don't want to put too big a rings on. Um, the rings are pretty much they're going to be the same. The two rings are the same. And these, I am not, okay, these have got the little locky things on them. So, a lot of times the rings will be beveled, and you make sure that the beveled edge goes down under the pin. These don't have that. These have got the little, if I can focus on it. See how it's got the little cut that kind of goes out around the uh, pin. So cuts at each pin, pop your rings on. So the next step I do, and I've already done that one and this one actually, I won't have to do it to the one I got from Erickson's, is to kind of touch these up with a ball hone, dingleberry hone. I do about 10 strokes in. I coat the hone with two-stroke oil because I don't have that nice little machine that Mark has at Erickson. I go in 10 strokes slow, 10 strokes fast. It gives you a nice cross-hatch pattern. Then you got to clean that off. So I'll, I'll be over here in the cleaning pan and I'll clean those off with, uh, uh, usually I used to use old gas that I've pulled out of jet skis, but I don't have any, so I'm gonna have to use new fresh gas in that pan and I'll brush them out and uh, clean these up. One other thing that just crossed my mind is that if you did go oversize on your jugs, then you're gonna have to have your power valve shaved. You can grind them off a little bit, but you can, I think, see, see how the valve comes down in there. If when you make this chamber bigger, that valve is cut for a standard bore. If you're running larger than a standard bore, then your valve is going to hit your piston rings. So make sure you shave your valve down if you've got oversized, otherwise you're gonna create a problem for yourself. Okay, so I've gotta take out the power valves to clean everything properly. Um, and if you remember, I had a stripped out bolt head on this cylinder, I believe, right here. So I was gonna swap this one with the one that was worked by Ericsson's, put it over in the what third position instead of the first or one or the other, switching it. Anyway, to get these out, you've got two. There's another one down in there, and this isn't showing it very well. Let's get out in the sunlight. You've got two Allens. There's the other one. This one's smaller than that one. I don't remember the sizes, but if you got a set of Allen wrenches, it'll work. And these are the improper... In other words, with this style, I'd have to buy wave eater clips to retain the pin from dropping out of this power valve. I can order the upgraded versions from SBT. You take off that clip right there and then pull the whole thing out once you've got that out. And then you've got to replace the seals that are on either side of that shaft. 
They're tiny little oil seals. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so you pull out the power valve. You got it in your hand. Let's get in some light. My shop is dirt floor, bad lighting. Not the best for videoing. Anyway, you can see I've got carbon buildup in those two slots and carbon buildup on that scalloped edge. Now I'm gonna take a wire wheel brush on my drill and I'm gonna hit that and get all that carbon off. And I'm gonna probably have to take a little screwdriver, which I've already got in my hand, and uh, just kind of chip that out of there. You'll do that for all your power valves. Clean them up, inspect your collar, make sure it's not missing. Power valves. Um, the problem with these was this tiny pin right here, when the engine would heat up, it would vibrate out and this whole valve would drop down in the cylinder and trash your cylinder out. Um, remember when you're reinstalling these that the scalloped cutout in goes down. Okay, well, or you can just note how you pull it out when you pull it out. And this one's easy because it looks like the grooves they cut in it, they're gonna face down with that scalloped edge. But I gotta get these cleaned up to get them back in there and get this one ready to go. Okay, so you've got it out, you cleaned it, you put it back in. Make sure you lock tight your uh, little Allen bolts so they don't back out on you. And look, you want a free moving valve. That way you know you don't have any carbon buildup causing that thing to bind up. Anyway, that's how you rip the gears out of your little motor is when those bind up with carbon buildup and it tears the gears out of the motor that actuates them. So I've got to order wave eater clips or I've got to order the encapsulating style of uh, actuator holder to fix this. And I've got to move this into another position so I won't be putting the uh, spindle with the cable wheels back on this one. So, because I'm going to move it. Okay, the next step, or a step you could have done several times ago, you got to pull these seals out. All you do is you get a screwdriver, go up under them like this, pry them out. I don't know that I can do it one-handed on the phone, but you're going to get new ones. There they are, one-handed. Come out fairly easily. Probably would have, should have done that earlier. I always seem to forget these until it's time to reassemble. Um, so yeah, it would have been better to do it earlier and just do it with the uh, cleaning, clean everything up. You're gonna get new ones with your full engine gasket set or your top end set. If you're just building a top end, it should come with those seals. That's where they go in your uh, power valve, sides of your power valve case, two for each one. Okay, reinstall your dowel pins for your cylinder and then put your gasket down. There's no sealant here and these are torqued to 30 foot-pounds. Um, yeah, 30 foot-pounds. You'll probably want to get your cylinder in the up position to install the rings, slide them on. Uh, this will only fit in one direction because of the way the pins are on the bottom so you can't accidentally put it on backwards even though it would seem like it would fit that way it won't fit that way if you put your pins in don't forget your gasket gasket down no sealant holding your rings in with one hand while you slide the uh, cylinder down over the piston that's what I'm going to do next but I'm going to get this piston in the all the way up position before this I do plate that it's got to go back on um, generally speaking, on all the other ones I've done, see the, this is actually two plates. This thin plate goes first behind the reeds like that, and then it bolts on. I'm going to look at my video where I took it apart, which is another good reason to video your work that you're doing and make sure that this is the way it goes, because guess what? It'll fit either way, but I don't want to put it on backwards. Now you can kind of look at the markings before you wire wheel brush it and tell which way it goes but i've got video i'm going to go back and refer to the video 
and make sure I don't put this plate on backwards. So that's where we're at right now. All right, quick section. Say you've got a power valve in your 800, 1200, this is a 1300. This one didn't want to come out. So I got it up and it, what happens is they get carbon build up on them. So what I did was I got the valve up and you can reach in here and push them up by hand. Um, you can see I freed it quite a bit because I've cleaned it. You can spray you some uh, penetrating oil, WD-40, PB Blast or something in there. This one was stuck and it would not come up. So I basically had to put this under for leverage and uh, pry. You can grab it with a pair of pliers. I suggest putting the cloth under it. You don't want to damage these. These are uh, unique to the 1300 and they're about $130 a piece for this part. So don't damage these. The problem that the older versions of these were having, this pin would come out when the engine heated up, thing dropped down. I think I mentioned that. And it would tear your piston all to pieces. Supposedly they fixed that problem. I don't know. But these are a little different than the 800s and the 1200s that I've worked on. This is the first 1300 I've ever worked on. Lots of carbon build up on these that you got to sand off, grind off with a wire wheel brush, let them soak. It'll make it a little softer and a little bit easier to get off. But once again, that scalloped edge goes down when you're reinstalling this. One more thing to mention before we move on to, uh, I got to put all these back together is the seals. I just push them in with my thumb. You know, you pull them out with that screwdriver, push them in with your thumb. This side that's open like that goes in on all of them. And so with the three cylinder, you've got six of those to do. You just boop, push them in just like that. And that's replaced. And then repeat for all your cylinders. So at this point, I'm putting my power valves back together. Uh, the one hex bolt there, that's the larger one. It's supposed to be metric. I'm using a standard wrench, so it fits a little tight. But uh, let's see if we can get in here. It's kind of dark. But I'm getting that in. I'm putting back... The regular actuator, you can upgrade these to the captured ones. They're $27 a piece from SBT. They are closed on the ends like this. If you use those type, you don't have to buy a wave eater kit. I have a wave eater kit set coming to replace these. This is obviously what it looks like when it's together. Um, the wave eater kit will be a clip. It just presses straight down on top of this without removing the bolts. Remember, you've got to put Loctite on these bolts. You don't want them coming loose. You've got to slide like your this. Since I swapped these, I had to take this off, which you got to take them off to clean your uh, valves anyway and clean out the hole that they go in. But um, So I'm building this, putting it back together. You put your actuator in. And you line up this, and you just have to lift up on this a little bit to get it lined up. And I have to have two hands to do it. As I was saying before the compressor kicked on, two hands to do it. You line up your hole there with the shaft locked tight on your Allen screw, stick it in. These two go down in the down position for the cables that attach and they are numbered one and two. If I can see that with this, it's gonna come out. It's just too dark in this shop. I've got a shade tree shop to go along with my shade tree channel. It's just not, not well lit and I don't have any kind of studio lighting, but there is a number one and a number two stamped on this. It tells you which cable goes in which position on that wheel. Um, still got to slide that on, solve my piston problem 
I'll put it all together. The Wave Eater kit comes with an upgraded spring piece. You won't use these plastic things that Yamaha used to space with the little rubber pieces they put on there. You won't use those once you stick the Wave Eater kit. It has a spring actuated piece that stays in there and does not utilize those anymore. But remember to put your washer on and then your clip. These clips will bend fairly easily, so if you have to pinch it closed a little to tighten it up before you reinstall it, do that. Um, and there's only the one washer on each side. Let's see if you can see it. So there's a clip there with a washer. And then here, washer. The wheel side does not have a groove for a snap ring. And I think it had a plastic washer that broke. So I don't have a washer to go on this side, but I do have one for this side. Just one important note, your middle shaft for your middle cylinder is different because it has to have this groove cut on each end. So it's, you know, it's different. So all three shafts for each cylinder are different, but they will go in any cylinder. So you can mix your, match your cylinders, but these shafts have to go in the proper position. And there is a special, I'm gonna to get to a reed valve, one reed valve is different for the middle on this one. It's not like that on the 800s. But I'm assuming the 1200 will be the same way. The middle reed valve is shaped different than the, than the other two. See, it has ears on both ends. The other two go like this, like that. And they kind of made up like this. We'll, we'll do a picture of it when we get there. But yeah, the middle one is, is the only one that has the angles on both sides. Okay, if you're not installing wave eaters, which I do not recommend, going back with the old You'll notice that the when you put these on, you're going to have uh, one will be facing one way and the other one will be facing the other way. That's normal. And so this Yamaha, is what Kawasaki, Kawasaki uses, Kawasaki. these little rubber boot things, which are easy to pull off. The only thing that secures them on there from coming off are those little plastic clips that Kawasaki gives you that fit right there. So... This is what it looks like without the boot on it. It's just a piece of plastic that, uh, you know, slips in. <laughs> it kind of just slips in. You see why somebody came up with something else. Of course, that's usually covered by a boot. And then the only thing that keeps it from backing off is a plastic clip right here. Just a plastic clip. This is factory. That's the only thing that's keeping that on is that little piece of plastic. So Wave Eater came up with a little bit better deal. And then of course the retaining clips for these pins. I've got one of those. I'll show you what it looks like. See how the ends are closed on this one? That's the upgraded version. Um, all the older versions don't do that. The old box full of these. Let's see if I've got another one in here. No, but I can show you on this 1200. This is a 1200. See how the ends aren't closed? And you'll also notice something wrong with this power valve in this 1200. The, uh, the rod has come out or broken right there on that power valve. And that's what was happening with these. I think I've got a power valve in here. This is out of one of the 800s that I've built, that pin. But you saw on the 1200, it's completely missing. One of the other things that will happen is... This edge right here 
will break this piece right here will break off and go down into the engine on one or both sides of a power valve right there and cause you all kind of problems tear your cylinder all the bits well that's it i mean you could go with back with this factory just like they had it you see it works but i'm uh i've spent the money on a wave eater clip kit for this one and i will wait till it comes in before i put these back together because the clips got to go on there and if you remember your bracket for your cables goes under here so even if you put these back together you're gonna have to pull these two bolts again to put that bracket back on um I gotta repair this hole because it's the one that was wallowed out it, it used to be in this position got great threads on this one this is where that heat sensor i believe goes in there so now my exhaust will bolt onto these two and the heat sensor will go here all right let's talk about this head gasket while we put it on here if you look at the shape of the head you've got kind of an oblong piece here okay so let's say you put this on like this well see how your gasket doesn't fit right see everything will line up you could put it on like that but that's not right because your gasket isn't right okay so then you could uh let's say flip it upside down then you got this tab sticking out where the exhaust goes in so that's not going to work, you know, because uh, that exhaust system, you know, this is going to be in the way. So how this goes, see how they got the rivets on this double gasket? It's like this. See how that fills that? Everything lines up. And you don't use any sealant or anything. See how the tab is now over here out of the way of everything. This is how that gasket lays on there. So make sure you put your head gasket on the correct way. No sealant. Um, I looked at the old gasket. They say you can reuse these if you're just doing a re-ring. I've, I've read on the forums where people say they've reused the head gasket 12 times. Me, I don't like to redo my work. Um, if I were going to reuse it or had to reuse it because I couldn't get parts, I would use some sort of... Uh, uh, head gasket sealant compound but it doesn't call for that now all I did was try to clean this up with a Dremel as best I could and I'm going to run with that so that was my what was it the front cylinder on this was bad so the head goes like that bolting on and uh, yeah because your these bolts go and hold the exhaust manifold which bolts on to these two so that's how the head goes. Don't put your head on backwards. See the pipes, the water pipes are out toward the exhaust side or the power valve side. That's how it goes. So now I gotta get all the head bolts. They should be over there in that bucket. Put them in. I'm sure it's 20 something. There it is right there in Newton meters. 34.3 Newton meters. And once again, all of your torque sequence is numbered. See that? One, two, three, four. Well, that's four, five. <laughs> There's three right there. So anyway, your torque sequences are there on the top. And let's remember this one had that did have a ground strap, which I've got over there as well. Um, grounding. There you go. Don't put your gasket on wrong. Don't put your head on backwards. Yes, I did that on the Kawasaki. I get in a hurry trying to watch what I'm doing through a camera. Doesn't always work out well. And that's a remember, these two head bolts cannot be torqued until the engine is down in the machine. Those are those long ones that go through the bracket that hooks up to the exhaust. So you got to leave these two out until your uh, final assembly. But the rest of them will go ahead and get in, snug down, 
put some blue Loctite on them and call it good.